Dancing on the surface of Yellowstone's supervolcano are more than two-thirds of the world's geysers. They are what made Yellowstone famous in the first place. So for the Yellowstone series, they had to be filmed. But the problem is, they can be fickle, erupting in their own time. Luckily, there is a group of dedicated people who spend their time trying to predict the unpredictable. They are the geyser gazers. Rocket Major 943. My name is Mary Beth Schwartz, and I'm a geyser gazer. I've been watching geysers for about 47 years. It's a whole bunch of different people. I don't want to use the word weird, but it might fit. I spend a lot of my time hiking out someplace that's not too crowded and sit down and wait for water to boil. I wasn't really aware of the geyser gazers till about eight years ago. What my brother said is I fell into bad company. <laughs> I consider it really, really, really good company. And I discovered that, that there were levels of understanding of geysers that I had never appreciated at all. Each geyser has its own personality. Some of them are playful, some of them are forceful, some of them thump. You get good splashing noises out of others. For the geyser gazers, these are much more than just plumes of hot water squirting from the ground. Each geyser not only has its own personality, but even its own name. I like to see Beehive. I like to see Grand, maybe a riverside. Lion erupts to 60, 70 feet and uh, you get a roar before it, e it erupts. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> geyser gazing is not just an obsession with geysers. It does have a practical purpose. The geyser gazers have a network all over Yellowstone connected by radio and they send all of the eruption time straight to the park's visitor center. This way there is a permanent record of geyser activity and thousands of people can also experience the thrill of watching geysers. Right with you. The geyser gazers recognize that each geyser has its own idiosyncratic behavior and that helps them predict when it will erupt. Castle has not erupted yet. No castle yet. Thank you very much. Are they watching it? <laughs> Intently. It's not even teasing us right now. Well, that's good though. You want it to be very quiet and it'll maybe do a few practice splashes and then it's going to erupt. Five. <laughs> well, you're right, Mary Beth. It yes. was quiet yeah, just before. Quiet. And it's supposed to be very quiet. That's there what it went. how it's supposed to do. <laughs> now let's hope it's a major. <laughs> That's the next landmark here. But with geysers, nothing is certain. This is very bad. Come on, come on. It look like it has I think it's been too long. It's only a couple of minutes. Visitor center, unless Castle can restart, it appears to be a minor. The visitor center, we copy uh, a minor. Very minor. <laughs> uh, I will post the sign as unpredictable. That's uh, the way it goes sometimes. It just can't count on geysers. <laughs> the water that fuels the geysers has to travel from up to five miles beneath the surface of the earth. So it's hardly surprising that sometimes eruptions are late or never make it. All Mary Beth can do for now is predict that this geyser is unpredictable. 
The castle is in unpredictable because it's just had a minor eruption and we have to wait for a major. The art of predicting geysers is about witnessing as many eruptions as you can. And the key to that is spending as much time around geysers as possible. Dick Powell is a geyser gazer and retired geologist who has even found a whole way of life that allows him to spend all of his time near the geysers he loves. I'm one of three people trained to do thermal cleaning in Yellowstone National Park. Most of the stuff that we pick up with me is what's called a grabber. We also have some more specialized equipment like extension poles with slotted uh, ladles or spoons on them. The ground around the geysers is not only very fragile, but also very dangerous. That's why in most cases he can't step on it. Usually we pick up some hats at various features on windy days because people don't understand how windy it can be out here and they don't have them secured. Obviously this one didn't use his chin strap to save his hat. Occasionally he does go off the edge of the boardwalks to the boiling pools because rocks get thrown in. And that's a problem because rocks can block up the throats of the geysers and hot springs. There's uh, some instances known where rocks may have been a reason a geyser quit erupting. As water in underground chambers is heated to over 500 degrees Fahrenheit, it explodes in a violent eruption of water and steam. As soon as the chamber is emptied, it is recharged and the process begins again. These cycles can be once an hour or once a decade, so you need to put in a lot of time to work them out. I have been out here sometimes for six hours or seven hours. Early in the summer when I started watching Sawmill, I was out for <coughs> 10 hours in the sun, but it was doing interesting things and I hadn't studied it before, so I just stayed out <laughs> and kept drinking water and enjoying it. There's turbine, let me write that down. When Grand goes off, there are actually three geysers that erupt, Grand, Turbine, and Vent. Sometimes you get just one huge series of bursts out of Grand, but uh, just a couple days ago, we got four bursts, and people were standing up, jumping up and down, cheering, it was so exciting. like watching fireworks all day long every day. It's just that it's hot water going up in the air and sparkling in the sunlight. It's like handfuls of diamonds just flying through the sky. After a long wait, <laughs> this is really worthwhile. What's going off in the background is Grand Geyser. It's, it's predictable with a four-hour window, that is two hours e either side of a calculated time. Before I even knew about geyser gazers, I'd go out and four hours to wait for this, no, I'm not going to do that. And then I fell in with the geyser gazers and they, you know, people would say, you know, you really want to stay for this because it's a really spectacular display. And I discovered, hey, yeah, they, they're right. It's nice for humans to be able to go to a more natural area than where they live and work and get to see something extraordinary, something very different from their everyday life. I would like to see Grand erupt an infinite number of times. <laughs> uh, when, when I am gone, I, I will be back <laughs> if there is a beyond. I'll be back to watch the geysers.